Welcome back. You're still watching Morning Live here on SABC News. Now, Scientist COP17 began this Saturday and will run until the 2nd of October. The aim is to educate people about the sale of endangered species. The public is also welcome to view exhibitions at the Senton Convention Center. Let us cross once again to our Morning Live producer, Kirat Lala, who is at the Senton Convention Center. Kirat, it's over to you. Thanks. Good morning, Paleso. Well, with me, I have two very special guests. They form the South African National Biodiversity Institute. I have with me its chief director, Professor John Donaldson, and the CEO, Tanya Abrahamsa. So well, let's start off with the CEO. Um, she's a very passionate lady. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. How are you? Right, thanks. So, Sanby, explain to us what it does. Well, we're a public entity and our mandate is in an act and one of the things we do many things one of the things we're famous for is running the national botanical garden system but the other area that we work on and often not known to be working on is providing science evidence for good decision making in uh, in management of wildlife and biodiversity so we are the scientific authority for example of South Africa and we advise the minister on the negotiations for CITES and the trade in endangered species one of the things we do so we're very pleased to be here at CITES let's bring in professor here so you a chief director and you're very involved with the nitty-gritty stuff yes morning so we're dealing with all the all the proposals all the different species getting all the scientific information together to inform the negotiations so let's talk about the trade uh, specifically for in our biodiversity what what is being traded the most in South Africa well, South Africa's got a very rich biodiversity and there are more than a thousand species in South Africa that are actually listed on CITES and that are dealt with in trade. The vast majority of those are plants, plants, reptiles and then quite a few mammals and birds uh, as well. So it's a, it's a very rich diversity of different species that are involved in trade. And do you know sort of what's the turnover per year of how much of these are being traded? In, in different things, so in some of the, the things that can be in, in, in thousands of, of, of kilograms, so for example, some of the, the plant species, aloe is, is a massive trade in aloe ferox, uh, in hoodia, which is a, uh, something for, for an appetite suppressant, uh, crocodile skins, uh, the parrot trade is also very significant, large th thousands of birds that go out every year. So many of these reptiles, they end up being, um, well, items in fashion. So well, how is the breeding or how do you regulate that in the country? So the way CITES works, CITES works through, uh, you do a scientific assessment of whether the trade is sustainable. And it works in two different ways. So one, it looks at uh, wild harvested specimens, and that's the, the, a big focus of CITES. So when things come from the wild, you have to figure out whether the trade is sustainable. And then a lot of other trade, for example, like in crocodile skins, is mostly done from ranch specimens. And there you've got to figure out whether the ranch is properly set up, whether it's got the right facilities, where, where they get their breeding stock from, whether it's all done uh, according to you know, good sets of guidelines and protocols. Let's bring Tanya in here. So you want the youth to be very active now in biodiversity. Yes, I mean, we're the third highest biodiverse country in the world. And it's an asset to, att to attain our developmental goals. Huge amount of careers and jobs in this very exciting area, in this green uh, biodiversity area and they are the future let me not be too cliche but they are the ones who are going to look after us when all of our grey haired ones retire so definitely it's a very interesting sector to be in and it's uh, and it's great when young scientists uh, get interested in our area and become decision makers and policy makers in our area so what sort of jobs are available if someone wants or is interested to be in this field a huge array, you, all the way from being a scientist, in other words, actually doing studies in zoology and botany and going out to understand this biodiversity that we have, to those who will monitor the environment, monitor the impact of human activity on the environment, for those who want to do ecological studies, looking at, say, for example, a whole river uh, system and all the various activities in it. And there's issues around invasive species, a lot of work around invasive species which is one of uh, the major threats we've got to our biodiversity is invasive species. So a huge array of very interesting areas uh, in, in biodiversity and all those skills are needed, we think, for the future. 
Tanya, thank you. And Professor, thank you very much for joining us on Morning Live. Okay, after this, uh, uh, it's back to Palesa, but right now it's a break.